Hey traders, Nick Shaheen recapping uh, first day of the week on January 12th. Red day, scoreboard is uh, best performer, second best performer is the Dow, minus 0.53%. SBX is minus 0.8%. Uh, worst performer is NASDAQ, minus 1%. Uh, small caps down between 0.35 and 0.48%. If you look at the IWM or the RUT respectively. Okay, so um, where did the weakness come from? The momentum stocks uh, got shellacked today, and we'll go through them. GoPro down over 6%, almost 7%. Tesla down 2%. Uh, you saw my note on that. Uh, Twitter down 2%. Uh, Facebook down 1%. Baidu, uh, 2 3 Netflix. Uh, Priceline down over 2% at one point, but then recovered. So I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, nothing specific to Priceline, but regardless, the... Um, down two and a half percent on Apple. Oh, how could I have missed Apple? What saved the day today? I say saved the day because they had the feeling it's going to be ugly. And let me show you why. If I look at the open, uh, if I if I uh, go backward a little bit too, the pre-open was even a lot higher than that. But then as soon as we opened, we ran up a little bit, and then we just fell off a cliff down to 2015. It was uh, pretty fast selling. So I'm pretty sure it shook off a lot of longs, but then we recovered, tried to rally, got to 20, whatever, 28 or whatever. And then we just trickled down the whole day, lower lows, lower highs, and wasn't good. The best thing about the day is, as far as the E-minis, which are the S&P, which is what we're looking at, is right here, knocked on this limit twice, and the second time broke up. But then fizzled, but we closed well above the lows of the day, 2015 something. That's good news. Also good news is this one right here. Small caps outperformed. That's a basket of 2,000 stocks. I like it when it outperforms. Look at that sell-off in the morning, though. Pretty scary stuff. But eight points off the lows is where we were going to close. So the recovery was not to the tops, but decent. Only closed down 0.3%-ish. So I'd say this saved the day. NASDAQ, not so much underperformed all day and stayed down there why probably because of this guy apple minus two and a half percent so uh apple out underperformed goog in line probably better than the nasdaq in general even though it had a scary moment this was uh, you know it came into the day on a downgrade and then twice already it rejected First time we rejected a downgrade lows was on an up day of 2% for the market, so it doesn't really count. This one counts in a good way for the bulls. I like Google long term. All right, so that's the intraday. What happened? Uh, what happens now to our um, uh, trends? Okay, so let's look at the S&P, SPX, and we have we've been looking at this blue one which is the October low that's a daily every candle is one day and then the most more recent correction and then the most recent correction which pierced that trend line but it respected kind of this one this is a two year long trend line and I'll zoom out and show you but this is two years long it got pierced here it got pierced here but here we did not close below it. we pierced it uh, I don't like lower lows I mean lower highs sorry about that and I don't like this, the fact that we're going in the rising wedge and we're respecting this high kind of. So let's look at volume to see how much uh, weight we give this one. I give it a lot of weight. This is the SPY, same thing. And this is a high volume, same as uh, Friday, same as the two days before that. So the red candles are coming on decent volume, which means it's got conviction. Um, I highlighted this box looking like this box before the sell-off and turned out to be a good thing to highlight and we were prepared for the sell-off so we booked a few profits there so this is the trend line I told you is two years old and I'll show you exactly how it looks two years it's uh, probably longer than two years now but it's a solid trend line it's to be respected and if it breaks then uh, we're in trouble so I don't like what's going on here okay this spirit, I don't like it. Okay, so let's look at the Qs today, uh, right here. Those are the NASDAQ. And uh, I said we were looking at this trend, but that been broken. Uh, Friday's candle was like borderline. I said, so let's keep it. 
uh, well that's broken and this little guy right there is broken that little orange I'll zoom in on it and we have lower highs which I also noted and it's not good so I don't like this you know lower highs knocking on a floorboard area it brings back this area into play should it break down and this is pretty bearish price action for the Nasdaq however I'm not gonna lay on big fat shorts right here because <clears throat> I'm afraid of Draghi it's a uh, binary event that's coming in the next couple of weeks I don't want to be collected by uh, overly exuberant reaction to something that he's been promising over two years this is a trend that's been broken and emphatically so today we closed well below it we've done it before but two in the last four days five days I don't like uh, lower highs so now we're coming to a point so are we gonna bounce back to here I don't see a reason without a headline which could be coming are we gonna come down to here I think it's more likely do I have any bets on it yes uh, I have some credit call spreads that I may have closed or may not have closed <laughs> but I'm not issuing new shorts right here that are close in time any shorts I'm gonna give myself some room to be wrong right so if something goes wrong I'm not forced with my back against the wall meaning avoid the weeklies that's what I mean to say avoid the weeklies there's no reason to play this week play out in time not even next week all right so this is uh, these are the cues did we look at the RUT already no so this is the small cap a lot of lines for you new or uh, members but uh, this is a box in which we've been playing and failing we failed here we failed here we poked but pretty much failed overall here we failed here we failed here we failed here we poked here but I said I need more than one candle so we're failing and here we are in the box and we, we touched this lower end I have higher lows higher lows eh, kind of broke it but not really we didn't close so it doesn't really count but uh, we're still in this area which is kind of kryptonite um, and I've used that word uh, as repellent I've used that word for Nasdaq the NQ 4300 and boy was it correct so I am not convinced of all-time highs we did poke through them recently but it took a long time and a whole lot of things to go right and a massive candle like this one right here and another massive candle behind it on the gap open it's just it took everything to be lined up perfectly in order to get here and fizzle so and look how fast we fizzle so um, so even a 2% day got reversed exactly by another candle on Friday so Thursday BAM to the moon Friday wait wait a minute that whole BAM was I don't know meaning there's a lot of uh, uncertainty today the VIX is up over 11% or was just before the close this tells me that the conviction and the long thesis is weak as is the, the fear uh, and conversely the fear of a pop uh, over exuberantly pop is also high so bulls and bears are nervous I don't want to be collected in collateral damage so this is the RUT and its sister index to see volume is the IWM volume is decent not as high as the this drop right here but it's as high as the the past four days so it's a legit move all right there are a few names I'd like to look at um, somebody just asked me for um, a couple of names after hours and we can we can start with those let's start with Lulu lululemon oh my goodness they must have reported and people must have loved it I used to trade lululemon religiously uh, every time I got hammered I went long it via credit put spread and then I found out um, I decided I should say that it wasn't worth it uh, the hassle I got from it was not worth the risk and reward they were easier places to make money all right so let's talk to it here just in case somebody's stuck in it so I can probably draw some sort of a parallel here and it's um, it's been breached and up and up and away but I see this green line and I don't remember why I drew it so let's zoom out and pick it up okay I'm gonna have to zoom out more and we'll have to talk big picture of Lulu you can tell how long ago I used to play it this was an area you know for a while Lulu was like a step up like a Chipotle 
right? And right here got defended well, bong, bong, bong. And then bam, off to the races. And then tried to break through kind of like the small caps and played in this area for a while. This is five years. Played in this area for a while and every candle is one week. But then right here, they decided to hate it. This is probably the see-through pants area. But then here it was some management issues. I can't remember exactly what. And then it gapped down and this run up fills the gap completely. That gap was not filled completely. So now that gap is filled and we bounced off of this low basically area. And they're reaching for this one. They want to come back and play in here. So am I rushed to go play with them up there? No. Uh, the markets are at all-time highs and being challenged, so I would rather wait. Furthermore, furthermore, if I zoom back to the one week, one year, this candle is not very convincing. This is what they call a doji. Why is it called a doji? Because it, it tells me there's indecision. Candles are telling so if I'm looking at this candle I can tell okay it closed it opened here closed here but it went as high as here but they couldn't hold it but they still closed high and it went as low as here but they couldn't sell it off it closed a lot better so that's a good news this is not very good news it tells me that it opened here they tried to run it to no end they said I love it I love it bye 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 and then wait a minute no what are we buying sell 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 no wait a minute I'm really not sure so bye and let's just close it almost exactly where we opened it what is that? It's the definition of indecision. And look at the volume size. It dwarfs the volume from Friday and the two days before that. So if all this action and they're not sure how to take it, even though it was up 7%, I'd rather wait. I mean, I would consider, okay, maybe I missed this move. Where's the rush? So I'll wait a little bit and see what happens. Uh, okay, other names I wanted to look at. Uh, GoPro, I sent out a video. I'm not going to redo it here. Uh, Priceline. All right, I promised I was going to do Priceline and check it out why. This is one year, and I draw these lines as I go along, right? I like going Priceline. I think it's well managed, uh, but it is hampered because it's European based. Uh, it's, a lot of its money comes from Europe, not European based. So here's um, today's candle. Yes, it's it bounced off of the worst parts of the day, which is over 2.5% down, closed right here. But uh, look at the line where it bounced off of the most recent close in October. So is this time to jump in with two feet? Maybe. But what if Draghi disappoints? This one will be tagged again. So there's no rush. This one runs fast. I'm zooming out to two years. There's the line. Look at two years ago where it was. It's in the thousands. So it's, can it get down here? It could get down here in a day. Um, here's one day. I dropped $100 right here so in one day it could conceivably come to this area right there with no problem so I want to see how it defends this area before I jump in if somebody forces me to do a trade this is on high volume by the way if somebody forces me to do a trade I want to be definitely down here which means I have to go out in time and do a credit put spread. So if I want to sell the 850 and buy the 825 but I'm not doing it I'm just saying if somebody is desperate to go along it it's probably better to go along it via debit call spread. So bank on the upside. They're going to report, uh, I'm going to guess, uh, late February. So if you want to start building a long position into late February based on a good report, then have at it. They're likely to say, we're scared of Europe, so they're not going to guide very high. And are they going to sell them? Are they going to buy them? I'm not rushing to do anything with Priceline, but I thought it was interesting that they bounced off of this level almost exactly. I did not draw this today. Uh, okay, Netflix. Oh, by the way, it was down 1.1 something percent. Down 3% on Netflix. Here's another line I did not draw today. I do not like the price action here. I believe I did a video on it last. I don't remember what I said. Hopefully, I said something bearish. I'll go have. To, I'll have to go back and review it. I I know I said they broke this green line and they're challenging this line. And I most likely said that if this line breaks and it's a likelihood that it breaks, this can come pretty pretty quickly. Okay, because I have lower highs, kind of like falling peaks, uh, bang, banging on a floor floorboard, and the floorboard. If it breaks, it's gonna boom. This comes easy. So they might want to be, be taking it back to play here. Okay, I don't think Icon is going to come out and defend. Icon has been bruised. 
and uh, in the oil market so he might be quiet about it so this area is the first area that interests me somewhere on 300 but then if this comes this is such easy target so I'm not going long it is what I'm telling you do not try to catch this falling life uh, there's no need this is two years okay uh, Netflix that was down Amazon probably same boat floorboard lower highs bouncing on the floorboard technically it's not a head and shoulders but the action is head and shoulder ish you know you try to run you fail you try to run you fail and then you try to run you fail miserably so it's just not conducive to a happy happy uh, stock and this is two years so this area has been well contested before they could be coming to visit it again so I would not be surprised to see it in this box if we fail here so it is market dependent if Draghi doesn't come to this uh, rescue of the market this one is vulnerable I'm not shorting it via credit call spread and I'm definitely not going long it for a nice bounce there I'd rather go long Google or go long Apple uh, before I go long this guy here's Google also in danger of losing this level with the big price adjustment on this earnings report I don't remember what people saw there uh, so crucial moment coming in this is Goog L uh, lower highs is not good uh, today's low was rejected but boy we're playing with fire here so I'm not going along that if markets trip up we are so far extended um, that puts are gonna pay all over the place so I'm cautious this trend is breaking it's not uh, able to break out even here I was shorted we shorted Google last week or two weeks via 562 and a half 567 and a half 560 572 and a half and that that was a winner so we don't have anything playing on it right now all right I'm up to 17 minutes I'm trying to cut it short but I'd like to cover these names uh, VIX we already said all right uh, Facebook was down 1% Twitter was down 2% but those are you know close your nose and jump in basically uh, Zillow is green that's unusual Yelp I had a write-up on Yelp recently I can't remember what I said about it but you can review the video it's available for you to review and let me look at the screen maybe I can uh, jog my memory Ooh. Yelp is back in this box not happy and uh, they tried to break out of the box to get into this box I remember what I said and they they were not able to do it that's one box that's the second box so they were not able to regain this area of play even though the last candle from Friday was very encouraging today down four percent back into the mired that area where they bounced from so let me zoom out and see what's at stake what are they fighting for this right here markets love to fill gaps this is an open gap um, a couple years ago they announced something nice BAM they repriced it and now it's at stake so if we lose the 50 I cannot guarantee you they will not take it down to the 40s so I am not going along Yelp if somebody wants to go along it debit call spread only no credit put spreads uh, not in this guy when do they report probably early February so double check when exactly I don't like the price action but earnings reports are coin flips so it's gambling money I'd rather put the play on after the earnings report so if they report and they love it and they bounce it all the way up to here I'll probably do credit call spreads if conversely they'll they'll hate it and sell it all the way down to a level to where I see it's got some good uh, support then I'll do a credit put spread until then I'm out I don't play with it all right, so biotechs are still in favor because of all the buyout um, and takeover and the holding hands that's going on. In general, today's market's action was very negative. After hours, we have Alcoa, and I have not looked. I I read that they did uh, they beat, but that doesn't mean they're um, they're doing well with regards to pricing. So. Uh, we'll see what's going to happen tomorrow. The open is not going to be probably very positive because of the overnight sessions. We're going to probably see what happened in the United States and say, "Oh my gosh, we're there down and whatever." So um, it's a you know you can never foretell the open, but what we can do is before the open, I'll send out my message saying that here are the new levels updated from yesterday, and uh, I don't anticipate to see many changes. However, I will note them if they do happen. Uh, the levels last week worked out perfectly and I anticipate that the data this week will also play out just as well 
uh, barring any major headlines. So until then, have yourselves a good evening. It's about 20 minute long video.